Today in the joy of editing, we're going to get a first look at the latest update for Topaz Photo AI. This is version 4. It now has a dust and scratch removal filter. Face recovery gets a bit of an improvement as well as the interface. We're going to check that all out. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the joy of editing with yours truly, Dave Kelly. Thank you for joining me again today. We're getting a look at the latest update for Topaz Photo AI. It now has a dust and scratch filter. Can you believe that? We're going to check that out today. I have this image with some dust and scratches on it. We'll see how it does in that. There's been a little bit of an interface change and some improvements to face recovery. We're going to check that out. By the way, there is a launch sale going on for Topaz Photo AI version 4, and it ends on May 28th, 2025 you can save $30 off. Now, I'll have my affiliate link in the description below. Just click on that link. It'll take you over to the cell. When you use my affiliate link, I make a small commission, and this helps to support my channel. So when you use that link, I really appreciate it. All right, then, let's get started. Now, you could use Topaz Photo AI as a standalone app, or you can also use it as a Photoshop plugin, which is what I'm doing today. And I have this image with some scratches and dust on it. Now, I duplicated my background layer because I never want to take the background layer into a plugin. And now what we do is come up to Photoshop's menu, look for filter, click on filter, and then come down and find Topaz Labs, click on Topaz Photo AI, and that will launch Topaz Photo AI. Now, the first thing I want to show you is Autopilot used to live down here at the bottom of the right-hand side of the interface. Now they moved it up top, and I think that was a really good change. Now, to run Autopilot for me, I have mine shut off by default. You can turn that on in the preferences if you always want to start out with Autopilot. Now, here's another change in this update. When you click on Add Enhancement, you'll note that we have Start Here. And this is a suggestion. If you want to do anything like dust and scratch, removal, super focus, when you want to really focus an out of focus image or do any removal, you want to do that first. And then when that is done, then you can go ahead and add enhancements. And then finally, finishing steps would be like recover faces, preserve text, and upscale. And all your presets now live down here. I believe they were at the top before, but now they move those down to the bottom, which I think makes sense. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section. Now, also for add enhancements, when you add an enhancement, say, for instance, I click on denoise, it runs denoise, and then I add another enhancement like adjust lighting. Note that adjust lighting goes to the top. So anytime you add a new enhancement in this new update, the new enhancement will go to the top of the stack. So that's a change. I'm going to go ahead and click the X to get rid of adjust lighting and click the X to get rid of denoise. I have no enhancements. I will click on Add Enhancement, and I will start here. Dust and Scratch Removal. They recommend that you do that first, so we're going to click Dust and Scratch. Now, this is still in beta, so this should improve as Topaz come up with new and better improvements. Now, let's take a look at this dialog box for Dust and Scratch. Process your image to continue. Now, you have choices here. You can process this in the cloud using cloud credits. This will cost you three. It'll take about 16 seconds, or you could process it on your computer. Now, I have a later model Mac computer. I'll put the information up on the screen so you can see. I'm going to process this on my computer, and I'll tell you how much time it took. But if you have an older computer and it's really slow, you can use cloud credits. Now, you do have to purchase cloud credits, by the way. They are not free. Okay, then I'm going to click on Process on Computer, and I'll let you know how much time it took. And by the way, note it says a large image could take longer to process. So bear that in mind. And I'm back, and it took 50 seconds on my computer, so that's not bad. I would never use a cloud credit. But again, if you have a slower computer, you do have the ability to use credits. Now, if I hold down my spacebar, this is before. You can see the dust. And when I release the spacebar, this is the after. It's done a pretty good job. But you'll note I have this little red circle, right? I can use my right bracket key. This is a brush to make it larger or use the left bracket key to make it smaller. And there's some little areas in here. See that? They kind of faded in. They're little dark spots, but you can get rid of those once you've run the initial 
dust and scratch removal. You get this brush and you can come and paint over areas like this. And pretty quickly, it gets rid of the little spots. So you could just paint over the little spots that you're getting. Anywhere you see them, just give them a little paint over. In fact, this whole area right in here, I can just paint over this whole area right here and it will get rid of those spots. So it's pretty quick. It's pretty easy. Like here's a couple over here. We'll paint off those. Now, once you're satisfied, and I know I didn't get them all here, but let's pretend I did. Then you just click done. And now note in the stack over here, I have dust and scratch. If I click the eye, you can see before, click it again, you can see after. I can click add enhancement. And let's say I want to sharpen this image. So now I can click sharpen. And now note that sharpen goes to the top of the stack. 56 is the autopilot adjustment. Let me increase it because I want to show you something else. I went ahead and zoomed in. Now let's only apply the sharpening to the subject. So let's come up to auto selection, click on the drop down, and I'll click on subject. And now if I hover over subject over here, you can see we're just getting the subject. No need to sharpen the background here. But notice how the eyes look and the hair. It looks a little bit crunchy. What I want to show you next is face recovery and some changes they've made with it. I'll click add enhancement. And let's click on Recover Faces. Now here's one change here. Select Faces and Controls are separated out. So if you want to just choose the faces you want to select, you can click Select Faces. And you know you can do Custom, Low Quality Faces, One Face, whatever you want to do. And then you can go back and click on your controls to make your adjustments. Now here's another change. See this String Slider? This is automatically adjusted for you according to how big the face is in reference to the actual image itself. So Topaz are going to suggest this would be the right strength for this image. In the previous version, these were not separated out. Now this looks more like the other adjustments where you have controls and where you can make a selection. So I like that. I think that's a good improvement. Also, this is a change. See where it says include hair, include neck. Now we have the choice right here. If you don't want the hair in the face adjustment, you could just click this toggle and shut it off. And notice how that hair gets really crunchy. Now watch when I turn it on. The hair is still sharpened, but it looks more natural. And then also include neck. Sometimes the neck will look a little funny and you don't want it on the neck. So now we have the choice right here in the controls. We can toggle off include neck or turn it on. So that is another change. But now look at the face itself. When I shut off Recover Faces, see how the eyes look really crunchy, the hair looks really crunchy. And now when I turn this back on, that looks so much better. And now if I hold down my space bar, we started out here and now we're here. So it's done a really good job. Now all we need to do to send this back to Photoshop is click right down here, Export to Adobe Photoshop. I'll give that a click. And now we save that out to Photoshop. And here we are in Photoshop. Let me shut off this layer. Here's before and here is after. So that's the new update for Topaz Photo AI. And don't forget, there's a launch sale going on from now till May 28th, 2025. Click on my affiliate link in the description below this video. It'll take you over to the cell. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I hope you enjoyed this first look at Topaz Photo AI version 4. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.